30 years ago, everything was fine. Then this happened. Hey, hello, we have an emergency. This is an emergency in San Francisco. What happened? Uh, there's a hell of an earthquake and we've got... Uh, How is it an emergency? Cypress section of the West Grand Freeway has come down. The cypress structure has collapsed. You're watching America's deadliest freeway disaster. 41 people just died. Another person will die in the hospital. There has been a rather strong earthquake in Northern California. A 7.1 magnitude earthquake shook San Francisco and its infrastructure, putting the city into the worst chaos it had seen in 81 years. There is no water coming out of the fire hydrants. Uh, we'll need a couple ambushes if you've got them at 30 seconds and uh, the freeway collapsed. In the middle of the disaster, this, Interstate 880, Locals called it the Nimitz Freeway. This 30-year-old double-decker freeway is called the Cypress Structure of the Nimitz Freeway. And its 1950s design let everybody down. The structural collapse of the entire freeway between 17th Street, as far as I can see. A one-mile section of the southbound lanes collapsed onto the northbound lanes. The massive upper deck crushing cars down to just 12 inches high. The northbound drivers died. The southbound drivers were shaken so badly by the earthquake, some, like this moving van, flew off the bridge entirely, plummeting to the street below. Nearby residents, police, firefighters, all rushing in, a few miraculously surviving. This is the deadliest freeway engineering failure in history. The earthquake shook the viaduct apart at 5.04 p.m., the height of afternoon rush hour. Traffic was light that day, free-flowing, very few cars on the road, lots of gaps. Because of this, Game 3 of the World Series between, of all teams, San Francisco versus Oakland. The entire town was electric. Workers raced home early to watch the game on TV, so it was an unbelievably light rush hour. And with 63,000 fans in the seats, thankfully the ballpark's engineering proved resilient. Take, I'll tell you what, we have an Let's rewind and imagine a nightmare scenario. It's four minutes to eight that same morning. Now we got another fresh crash. This one on the 80 Westbound, just before the Bay Bridge. Big rig dipped on its side as all lanes blocked. You're bumper to bumper past Broadway. The Cypress structure's lower deck is packed bumper to bumper with cars. Four lanes, one mile long, one passenger per vehicle. Thousands would have been killed. It was 1949. Motorists could now zoom across the new Bay Bridge right into the heart of Oakland. And the city streets were drowning in cars. So the city council wanted a beefy new road to help carry drivers from the city to the bridge. Urban planning was a bit more racist back then. Engineers went out and found the cheapest land, which happened to be slums in a lower income ethnic minority owned neighborhood and they took their pen and drew a line right through it along Cypress Street. Since there was already a street there, engineers decided to build a double-decker freeway over the street, one that would take half the space of a conventional freeway because it was stacked. Really, it was a triple-decker structure because Cypress Street was still on the ground. Column construction attracted considerable interest. This installation consisted of 45 one and one eighth inch diameter high tensile steel rods enclosed in flexible conduit for post tensioning. A bottom slab and girder stem pour presented a beehive of activity. All phases of construction are of equal importance, but the success of the job manifests itself to the traveling public in the writing quality of the deck. There were over one million square feet of deck in the two contracts. A bridge department man who checked the entire deck with a straight edge to ensure as perfect a surface as is possible to attain. The curb and rail has been especially designed for safety. The structure had grown at the rate of one normal, three span, four lanes wide undercrossing every third working day. Compare this 
to the usual normal construction time of about six months. Final preparations have been made for the opening ceremony and celebration. At last, another stranglehold by traffic is eliminated. California's first completed double-deck viaduct, a ride on a portion of the northbound lower deck, results in a definite sense of security. A return trip on portions of the southbound upper deck results in the same sense of safety. So the sun is setting on another monument to the Division of Highways' relentless drive to provide safety, convenience, and lasting benefits for California's motorists. A definite sense of security. The same sense of safety. Safety, security. Safety, safety, security. Safety, safety, security. Safety, safety, security. Safety. The Nimitz Freeway and its Cypress Structure Viaduct opened to traffic on June 11, 1957. Now with the Cypress Structure on the ground, the governor demanded to know, are California's freeways safe? His board of inquiry worked with researchers and found three big flaws. One, the Cypress Viaduct was a brittle structure. If a structure is bendy, it can ride out an earthquake pretty well. But in the 1950s, they thought building the structure really rigid and stiff was the best way to make it strong. That made the Cypress structure more likely to snap. Before the 1950s, there had been a drought of earthquakes in California, so researchers hadn't been able to study them. But in 1971, an earthquake north of Los Angeles destroyed this brand new interchange between Interstate 5, 210, and California's 14 freeway in the Newhall Pass. And that's when engineers at Caltrans realized that if bridges can't flex, they can't ride out an earthquake without snapping. Number two, it is generally agreed that the soft ground beneath the collapsed section of the Cypress Viaduct amplified ground motions more than anticipated. And then the researchers found this. Structural design weaknesses in the two-tiered freeway had been identified before the tragedy. Seismologists found that the collapsed section was built on fill over bay mud. A southern section, built on alluvium, did not collapse. The ground underneath the Cypress structure was sort of like, well, a cupcake and jello. What I mean by that is the southern end was solid dirt. They call it alluvium, material dumped by a river over centuries or millennia or eons. The northern end was just swamp, had a little dirt stuck on top of it. And during an earthquake, that type of soil shakes like jello. That's exactly what happened. Instead of dampening the earthquake's waves, the soft dirt amplified them. As a result, the northern section completely collapsed, while the southern section remained intact. Number three, inopportune placement of hinges in the upper story columns to accommodate future proposed widening. Unless you live in the Bay Area, you might not know that the Cypress structure is not the only double-decker freeway. San Francisco is littered with lots of double-decker freeways. And while the earthquake damaged most of them, only the Cypress structure fell down. It turns out the big brackets that hold up the freeway, engineers call these bents, were pretty much straight up and down, very square with 90 degree angles. So all that weight, the traffic, and the bridge itself puts on these bents, gets transferred directly straight down to the ground. But the Cypress structure had bents that looked like this, evidently to give room to widen the freeway later. The report wasn't clear. But see how it's shaped at an angle? Instead of pushing all that weight straight down to the ground, it sort of pushes it out at an angle. That is where the structure failed. Crews took six months to demolish what remained of the Interstate 880 Cypress structure. Once the bulldozers left, the city and Caltrans had a blank canvas, a chance to kill two blunders with just one street. Instead of rebuilding the double-decker in the middle of the city right where it was, they decided instead to build a new traditional single-level freeway on the edge of town near railroad tracks. 
with all eyes on the project, engineers knew the road had to be perfect. By the time it's finished, the Cypress replacement project will probably reach one and a quarter billion dollars. The new I-880 Nimitz Freeway opened to traffic on July 23, 1997. Oakland was reunited for the first time in decades. We now have sunshine, not shadows, grass, not gas, trees, not trucks, walking, not ducking, butterflies, not garbage flies. No more towering structure, only the surface street remains. Cypress Street's now named Mandela Parkway, named for Nelson Mandela. Unlike the 1950s where engineers plowed the road through with very little thought, the new I-880 Nimitz Freeway and the Parkway are a beautiful example of what can happen when residents of the community and Caltrans work collectively. California is not the only state which gets serious earthquakes. Earthquake, get on the air now, 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 get on the air, let's go. Seattle saw a pretty big earthquake in 2001, a magnitude 6.8, 400 people were injured, $3 billion in property damage happened. The quake was just seconds away from bringing this down. Look familiar? The double-decker Alaskan Way Viaduct, a two-mile freeway built in the 1950s, elevated over the street below. Familiar story. Sections of the viaduct sunk several inches in that earthquake, and so engineers quickly shored it up but the Alaskan Way Viaduct was so critical to Seattle's commerce, traffic reopened immediately. But it was clear Mother Nature had fired her warning shot. The Alaskan Way Viaduct had a lot of the same problems as the Cypress structure. Seattle had to deal with one additional problem. The viaduct was old and rotting away. Experts predicted a one in 20 chance that the viaduct would fall down within 10 years. The Washington State Department of Transportation conducted this earthquake simulation on the computer and it kicked politicians in gear to fix the problem before they too had a Loma Prieta style disaster. Today the Alaskan Way is gone. Removed safely with bulldozers, a new toll tunnel replaces the viaduct. It's one designed to handle an earthquake removing the disaster from the city's next big earthquake. 42 people died on October 17, 1989. That will always be a tragedy. The lessons of civil engineering are written in blood. And for those that died in Loma Prieta, the profession failed to look out for them. But the lessons learned make sure that the Cypress collapse always remains America's worst freeway disaster, and hopefully last freeway disaster.